Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech and Auto Show. I'm your host Mara Sina and it is so good to see all of you lovely people once again. In case you're new here, welcome. You have just tuned into that one show which satisfies your hunger for both technology as well as automobiles at one place and as a result, we always have a lot of things to talk about on the episode. So without any further ado, let's get to it by first showing you a glimpse of what you can expect over the course of the next half an hour. This week, we will be taking you for a ride on the electric scooter from the house of TVS, the TVS IQ. Then we'll get into the world of gaming and talk about the Asus ROG Zephyrus. So there you have it. All of that action will be coming your way. And yes, the 2021 Hector CVT facelift is giving us company today for this episode. Now let's start off with perhaps the most talked about term in the automotive world, electric scooters. Every other day, there's a new one coming around, but when a big manufacturer like TVS takes it seriously, well, you get the TVS iCube. Now Anirudh got his hands on the scooter and here's how his experience went. Now, if you look at the Indian electric two-wheeler market as a whole, you'd see that a lot of manufacturers are newly established startups. But what we have here today is the iCube, the first electric vehicle that comes from the house of TVS, an established manufacturer. So today we're going to be looking at what happens when a manufacturer who knows a thing or two about making scooters gets into the electric vehicle segment. So starting with the design, we think that the TVS's ethos of a more simplistic, nonsensical design is quite evident over here. Unlike the new manufacturers that have entered the segment with out-of-the-normal products to create a dominance in this space, TVS has chosen to go with a foolproof idea of a scooter that can be a solid replacement for the ICE ones. This idea is right there with a flowy design with not a lot of creases. Unlike its stablemates, the iCube does get a somewhat futuristic U-shaped LED headlight that we thought could have done with more illumination as well as throw. The front apron also gets a strip of light in the middle that houses the DRL and the indicators, which we thought did stand out, but not in a good way. The rest of the design to say the least is well thought. It gets sleek looking tail lamps and blue light on the motor hub that clearly indicates that this is safe for the environment. In all, a fleeting glimpse from a distance and you might mistake this for a conventional ICE scooter and it is only when you swing a leg over it that you will realize that the formula is completely from a different textbook. Paint finish like any other TVS product are top notch. We found very little panel gaps in the scooty, but the units that we were provided with rattled a little too much at the front. But again, I am just nitpicking. Speaking of which, a little cost cutting is also evident around the switch gear as we felt that the plastic was a little tacky and didn't have good touch to it. Now, as against the other players in the market, it is safe to say that the IQ falls short on a lot of features. The instrument panel, for example, is nothing more than a glorified TFT that stands a rung above other scooters in the TVS lineup. The company is providing Bluetooth connectivity as standard which can show calls and messages on the screen. Now, TVS is planning to come up with a subscription model for Rs 900 per year which will include geofencing, fall alert, remote charging status, navigation and will display the nearest charging stations. Now the TVS iCube gets a 2.25 kilowatt hour battery that promises a range of 75 kilometers on a single charge. The battery can be replenished from 0 to 100 in just 5 hours with a 5 ampere socket. But the one thing that we noticed was that the instrument panel remains on while the scooty is on charge, which means if you're staying in a gated society, people can mistake for the scooty to be on and maybe fiddle with it. Now the battery sends its juice to a Bosch motor hub at the back that peaks at 4.5 kilowatt. While the figure might be a tad bit lower in the face of it, we found that the scooter does not behave that way in any manner. In city conditions, the iCube is quick, zappy and immediate in all senses. However, we did see a little inconsistency regarding the top speed of the scooter. On flat smooth roads with no elevation or slopes, the top speed of the iCube in eco mode fluctuated between 42 kmph to 50 km per hour. On the sport mode, the scooter either maxed out at 65 or went up to 78 km per hour, all while the battery was charged more than 50%. 
The weight distribution on the iCube, to say the least, is on point and you can carry the stability through fast corners and tight traffic alike. The dual springs at the back and the conventional forks at the front are set on a softer side and does a great job in ironing out most bumps. The sharp ones, however, will communicate with your back. Now the ergonomics is where the TVS iCube actually impressed us. Once you get on the scooter, you are invited by a very low seat and a very low handlebar. For reference, I am 5 foot 7 and everything is very easily accessible to me. Now this translates to better city riding in terms of exhaustion that doesn't come very frequently. The iCube gets 220mm disc at the front and drum brakes at the rear. The setup has ample of bite and provides good feedback under heavy braking. However, after close to 60 kilometers of continuous riding, we did notice a little fade. Now, if I have to sum up my experience with the TVS iCube, I'm happy to report that this one actually covers all the bases required for an electric scooter quite efficiently. But the one that makes it a bang for the buck is the fact that this comes from the house of TVS, which means from the minute you take it home, you are backed up by an extensive network of service centers and expertise that comes with the manufacturer. So if you are looking to buy an electric scooter in the current climate, there is no reason to shy away from this. Now as promised, let's get into the world of gaming and let's talk about gaming laptops. Today, we'll be talking about the Asus ROG Zephyrus. Darab has got his hands on it and he's sharing his review on whether this gaming laptop is the one to buy. Take a look. So gaming laptops are probably the best portable devices for gamers out there. Now they offer great portability along with the ability to offer you the best possible graphics that you can ask from either a console or a PC. Now Asus's Republic of Gamer or ROG is a common brand when it comes to gaming oriented devices. Now Asus has come up with this laptop, the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16. Uh, which comes with an 11th generation Intel i9 processor paired with 32 GB of RAM and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 graphic card with 8 GB of VRAM, 1 terabyte of SSD storage and 165 Hz display. Now when I heard these specifications, I was very excited to review this laptop and play a lot of games on this. I used it for a while and here's what I thought. <music> In terms of design, the ASUS ROG Zephyrus M16 doesn't really stand out. It's a standard black laptop. There's a 16 inch screen, so it's big. Uh, there is a soft touch finish on the bottom part of the laptop, which is great in terms of grip. But on the other hand, it stains quite easily due to sweat or oil. The display part is quite nice. It's, it looks very good with the minimal bezel. Uh, there are front facing speakers here, of course, there are RGB lights on the keyboard which you can change the color of and you can adjust the changing patterns, the brightness and so on. There are front facing speakers here. Uh, the back panel of the laptop is hard plastic. There is ROG logo here and there is this dotted pattern which has these rainbow colored accents inside it that you can only see when it comes against the light. All in all, quite a basic design which uh, will go with most of the users. So the display on the ASUS ROG Zephyrus M16 is just beautiful. It's a Quad HD display with a 165Hz refresh rate. The display is super smooth and super vivid and it has a 444 nits of peak brightness which is bright enough for all kinds of settings. The 165 hertz refresh rate makes the experience super smooth and it enables 120 fps gaming which is just pleasing. The display is top notch in terms of quality and color correction and smoothness. However, during my usage the display conked off uh, quite a few times and I had no idea how to get it back up. The usual lock and lock method didn't work and I used to either plug it in or out or put the flap down or back up in order to get it back up. A great display but with a very irritating bug. An 11th generation Intel Core i9 processor with 32 GB of RAM, 
an 8GB NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 graphic card with 1TB of SSD storage. All of this with the Quad HD display with the 165Hz refresh rate. The laptop showed no signs of slowing down whatsoever and played heavy games like Forza Horizon 5, Call of Duty Warzone and even Flight Simulator and showed no signs of lags. The laptop also enables 120fps gaming and I played Forza Horizon on 120fps and the experience was just something else. So the battery on the Asus Zephyrus M16 is not the best. The laptop doesn't last more than 3 to 4 hours on power. The charging however is super fast with a huge 240 watt fast charger. It heats up also a lot even during normal usage like I used it for work and even during that time it used to heat quite a bit. The fans also make a little bit of noise. So that was it. Probably the most specced out gaming laptop of the year. Now I personally play my games on the console but I love the gaming experience on the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16. 120fps gaming makes all the difference and the Asus Zephyrus M16 gives you everything you can ask for in a gaming system. The laptop looks decent and performs amazing. However, the 165000 starting price is something to think of and the laptop doesn't offer the best battery in its segment. Now here at the Tech and Auto Show, we bring you all the latest motorcycles and often some days end up being better than others. One such day recently happened where we got our hands on what is perhaps one of the most extreme and capable adventure motorcycles that money can buy in the world. It's called the BMW R1250 GS. I took it for a ride and here's how it went. Ever heard the term bringing a gun to a knife fight? Well, in the world of motorcycling, if you bring, say, a tank to a knife fight, then the equivalent motorcycle coming to the fight will be this, the BMW R1250GS. Now, the reputation of the motorcycle precedes itself because this is the choice of motorcycle for those who go around the world on two wheels. Tourist best friend and insane adventure capabilities as well. That is what the 1250GS has been all about. And in order to give you a shorter impression, well, I would like to quote someone famous. Perfectly balanced as everything should be. Did I just quote Thanos on a motorcycle review? Yes, I did. And with that, let's find out more about the 2020 version of the BMW R1250GS. Let's start with the design of the motorcycle and the first thing that you will notice is that this BMW is massive. Everything from the stance to the road presence, the 1250GS is grand. The design highlights for me personally consist of the adaptive LED headlamps which move about when switched on making for a great conversation starter, the very effective adjustable wind deflector and the massive instrument cluster which has crisp animations and colors and tells you everything you need to know. In my books, this is the best instrument cluster in the business. Now that you know about the design, let's talk about the ergonomics. And as you saw in the design, everything on this motorcycle is big. And that really comes across when you're approaching the motorcycle to sit on it. Like in the position that I am now, you see a very big motorcycle in front of you, especially because of the engine layout, because of its boxer layout. Everything feels really big. But the special thing happens once you get on top of the motorcycle, like I have just done. And then you realize just how comfortable the motorcycle is and what a fantastic balance it has. Everything is well within reach. You sit upright and the overall seating position is very comfortable. If you want, you can plant your feet perfectly onto the ground as well. For reference, I'm 5 foot 10 and I have good amount of composure over me, even with both my feet onto the ground. What riders will also appreciate is that the motorcycle has very comfortable seats both for the rider as well as for the passenger. Sitting on this motorcycle for hours at an end will not be a problem at all. And now since this is a proper adventure motorcycle, you would be doing some riding while standing onto the foot pegs as well. And in order to show you that, I've just put the motorcycle on the double stand. And once you're standing on the motorcycle, you realize 
that over here the section is actually quite narrow you can really lock your feet onto the foot pegs everything is well within reach once again and you can have a commanding riding position if you're attacking those trails on top of that you have enough space to move about as well for your short turnarounds and u-turns that you need to take so all in all even when you're standing or when you are on the motorcycle the 1250 gs is very comfortable And speaking of comfortable, the R1250GS comes with things like cruise control, heated grips, keyless lock both for the handlebar as well as the fuel tank cap and electronically adjustable suspension as well. The motorcycle keeps you pampered and it keeps you happy. And a lot of that comes from the heart of the motorcycle. Now I love BMW engines and this one too is a peach. This is a 1254cc engine in a boxer layout. It makes 136 horsepower and 143 newton meters of torque, which makes the motorcycle have a top speed of over 200 kilometers an hour. Now I know these are like super bike numbers, but it's the way the power is delivered. Also keep in mind that this motorcycle gets the BMW shift cam technology, which in simple words basically means you have a good spread of power and torque across the RPM range. Now just to put it out there, covering each and every bit of this motorcycle will take us all day because there is just so much working together in tandem to give you the GS experience. So instead, let's just focus on that, the GS experience. What the motorcycle does exceptionally well is that it has a sense of calm and composure despite being a beast of a motorcycle and that really translates to the rider and the riding experience. You would just want to hit the highway for a thousand kilometer long ride every time you get on it and that itself makes it the legend that it is today. It is the sense of control and confidence that the bike instills into the rider that makes it an experience they won't forget. And above all, this is true for no matter what road conditions you are on and above even that is the fact that the motorcycle always has more to give even if you are a very skilled rider. There is literally no other motorcycle quite like the GS. It is the friendliest friend you will make and at the same time, it is also the alpha motorcycle of the back. So at the end of it all, you get the idea. The BMW R1250GS is loaded to the brim with absolutely everything. It gives you the best of everything that you would want in an adventure motorcycle. But it's not the big numbers, the big technology features, the electronic rider aids and everything that it gets on paper. It's how the motorcycle rides that really sets it apart and above the rest of the competition. Yes, it can do everything at extremes, but if you want to ride it on regular highways, go for long distance touring or do office commutes as well, this will do that with utter ease too. And it's also surprisingly very friendly for those stepping up to this big of a motorcycle. Once again, we're back to square one. The BMW R1250 GS is perfectly balanced as everything should be. Welcome back. You're watching the Tech and Auto Show. I'm your host, Manav Sinha, and this is the 2021 MG Hector facelift that's giving us company today for this episode. Now, we get a lot of requests asking about which is the right kind of affordable true wireless earbuds that you can buy in the market. Well, Huawei has a new set vying for your attention, and we are putting it to the test as Abhik is taking over and telling you all about it. Huawei might be struggling in the smartphone space, but the company continues to launch its smart wearable tech in India. Recently, we saw the launch of this. The Huawei Freebuds 4i truly wireless earbuds that cost roughly 8,000 in the country. Now, the key features on this one include active noise cancellation and 10 hours of battery life without ANC enabled. In case you're wondering how these earbuds perform with a non-Huawei smartphone, that is essentially an Android smartphone or an iPhone. Here is our breakdown. We 
We'll start with the charging case that adopts the same color as the earbuds. That being said, customers can choose between red edition, ceramic white and carbon black color options. Since the bevel shaped charging case has a glossy finish, it leaves fingerprint marks. The case can also be prone to scratch marks so make sure you're not carrying keys in the same trouser pocket. Additionally, the connectivity button sits on the right side which is not the easiest to locate at first. Now each earbud weighs roughly 5.5 gram that is pretty lightweight but I have said this in my past review that I am not blessed with big ears so wearing in canal style earbuds aren't always comfortable. But these earbuds fit snugly in your ears without causing too much discomfort but the most annoying part here is the charging case that comes with a very small lid when compared to the base. What that means is that when you're trying to establish a connection with the button on the right, even any slightest amount of touch just shuts the lid down, therefore hampering the entire connectivity process. Coming to the performance, the Huawei FreeBuds 4i can work with an iPhone, a Windows PC and Android smartphone as long as there's support for Bluetooth. For our review, we mostly tested these earbuds with an iPhone 12 as we were unable to establish a connection with the app for Android. Now Huawei has clarified that these earbuds work with the Android app so do keep that in mind. To tweak touch controls, you will need the Huawei AI Life app that is available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. The app also lets users enable and disable wear detection that automatically pauses music as, as soon as you remove the earbuds from either of your ears. You can also switch between ambient sound mode and active noise cancellation but you cannot tweak their levels as one may expect at this price point. Coming to the audio output, the sound quality on this one is crisp, it is clean and balanced but you don't get the punchy bass as you may get on rivals like Nothing Ear 1 and Jabra LE 3. The high and low frequencies on this one is just average meaning you won't get the best beat drops and the earbuds don't offer the loudest sound. And now if you're wondering how the dual mics perform on this one, here's a sample. The audio quality during calls is pretty solid thanks to the dual mics on each earbud. In fact, we get sharper and clearer audio quality even when compared to some top tier earbuds in the market. Now the battery life on the Huawei FreeBuds 4i is surely impressive. The company claims roughly 7.5 hours of music playback time with active noise cancellation enabled. But during my test, I was getting roughly 6.5 hours of battery with active noise cancellation enabled that even stresses further when the ANC is disabled. The charging case does not support wireless charging. But again, these are bargains that you make at this price point. <laughs> Huawei FreeBuds 4i when compared to rivals offer good sound quality, great battery life and decent active noise cancellation but when connected to an iPhone. You see we tried establishing a connection with the Android app with not just one Android smartphone but two but we were unable to do so. So if you are an Android smartphone user who's planning to buy these earbuds, make sure that you read the return policy thoroughly before making any purchase decision. <laughs> And with that, we've come to the end of this edition of the Tech & Auto Show. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Do let us know by reaching out to us on our Twitter handles. And I look forward to seeing you once again, same time, next week, only on CNN News 18.